<sighs> well, you guys have no idea how long I've wanted to see this movie. I've had to argue and argue with my mom and debate and discuss why I'm old enough to see this movie. Yada, 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 yada. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, my dad rented this fucking movie for me on Netflix so I can finally talk about what is on WatchMojos.com. Number one, most controversial movie of all time, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange, starring the fantastic Malcolm McDowell and David Browse and some other people that, whose names I can't remember. So Clockwork Orange is supposed to take place in an alternate future in England. We can assume we're at probably in the 80s because the book itself was written in the 1960s. So, we meet Alex and his three droogs. And him and his droogs like to cause a shit ton of lovely innocent little mischief, right? Like cheaping houses, knocking over trash cans, you know, little shit like, you know, I'm just fucking bullshitting you. No, here's what we do. Me and my three Jews break into people's houses, cause traffic accidents, and break into someone's house, and I rape someone's wife while one of my Drews beats the shit out of the husband, taping his mouth, forcing him to watch me rape his motherfucking wife while I'm doing, I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain, and... Yeah, that scene, that singing in the rain scene from this movie. It's one of the most chilling scenes I've seen in my life. It's disturbing, it's hard to watch, but just the way Kubrick films this movie, you can't take your eyes off it, no matter how disturbing and how fucked up and savage this film gets. You just can't stop watching it because it's that good and of course after Alex does his little bit of the old ultraviolence getting into some fights with a rival gang of droogs and beating the shit out of them glass and really fucking brutal scene goes home to his parents stays home from school his parents don't know they don't know shit about what he does at all they don't know anything the thing about Alex that makes him such a great, well, evil and great teen character. Yes, Alex is fifth. He's 15 years old. And if you watch a lot of the news today that's reported, the scarier and more fucking relevant. This little movie right here seems to be than it ever was in the 1970s. See, if you, see, Project X, the 2012 found footage movie, if you want to show teens causing mischief and destruction and really in an intelligent way that doesn't glorify property damage and causing mayhem, this movie right here, because Kubrick is not an exploitive director. He knows how to handle a subject like the ones presented in the film with care and eloquence. Of course, Alex does some really fucked up things until he breaks into this one woman's house with tons of cats. Him and his three droogs break into this woman's house and tried the same excuse he did. He was like, we need to use your telephone right away, ma'am. We need to use it right now. My friend, he's, he's in the street now. He's up right now. And she's like, I don't really know. He's like, sorry for disturbing you. But you know Alex with his mask. He breaks in. And she's scared shitless. She tries hitting him on the head with a Beethoven statue. He starts, and he uses this dick statue and he kills her with it and he's charged with murder and then of course he gets the shit kicked out of him by the cops and another thing that he does is that one of his droogs I believe Georgie Georgie starts questioning Alex 
And Alex doesn't like to be questioned at all, especially about his leadership. Because when they're walking down the street, he says the following. As we walked along the flat block marina, I was calm on the outside, but thinking all the time. So now it was to be Georgie the General, saying what we should do and what not to do, and dim as his mindless, grinning bulldog. But suddenly I vidded that thinking was for the gloopy ones, and that the omni ones used like inspiration and what bog sends. For now it was lovely music that came to my aid. There was a window open with a stereo on, and I vidded right at once what to do. I also forgot to mention one really messed up thing. So he runs into this homeless guy in a tunnel. And this is how much of a coal this is how much of a sadist and nihilist he is. One thing I can never one thing I can never stand was to see a filthy, dirty old drunkie howling away at the filthy songs of his father and going blur 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 in between as it might it be a filthy old orchestra and a stinking rotten gut. I can never stand to see anyone like that, whatever his age might be, but more especially when he was real old like this one was. Yeah, so an old guy who's drunk is just singing and having fun. Him and his three droogs beat the shit out of him. And man, it's disturbing because he just, he enjoys causing people pain. He enjoys causing suffering. And this guy is just an evil, evil, evil character. And the scariest part is you can't call him a man. You cannot call Alex from A Clockwork Orange a man because he's not a man. He is a teenager. And when you really see how much of a sadist and how much of an evil, evil, sick bastard this kid is, it's just disturbing that this guy has no regrets. He has no morals, and eventually after he murders this woman, he gets a sentence of 14 years in his correctional facility. Now, most of us would think that, oh, he'll reform, he'll change, he'll do this, he'll do that. Not Alex. Not after you watch this movie. It's like you're keeping an eye on this motherfucker, and you're saying to yourself, I know this man. He has a very sly tongue, very slippery tongue. He's a bullshit artist. In fact, when he's in the correctional facility, where he's being, he's bullshitting this prison priest in the film. When he says, "Oh, I know the good book, sir. I love reading a good book," when in reality he says something along the lines of this: "I hated the more preachy bits, but boy, oh boy, did I love the violence." And we see inside his head that he imagines himself being one of the Romans whipping Jesus on the back as he's about to be crucified. Now, I'm an atheist, but even I was disturbed by that scene. That was a disturbing and brilliantly executed scene. And then he goes through this therapy which really forces him not to be a violent psychopath. And it literally forces him. They put these things, in fact, I'll show you a picture of him. But they do this to him one, two, three, four, five times. You know, they beat him, but they also use this drug 
to make him feel that the violence is wrong and evil. And they do, and Alex naturally has no remorse. He has no empathy. He has no compassion. As I said, he is a nihilist and a sadist. So how does a nihilist and sadist have really any form of remorse? They force it on him by torturing him. And you somewhat feel sorry. You feel this much sympathy for him, which is the most brilliant part. Alex, as evil as Alex is, as evil as he is, you can find some little thing to have sympathy for. That's chilling, and that is also the brilliance of how Kubrick wrote the screenplay and directed this. Because I don't believe that any director but Kubrick could have done this movie as flawlessly and perfectly as he did. Oh, he took liberation with the book. You know what? I'll be honest, I haven't read the Clockwork Orange book, but I trust Kubrick as a filmmaker. And while he's not that, and while he may be a book butcherer, what he does for the story is he makes it better. Kubrick is one of the few people who knows how to, who knew how to make a better script. Now, after the torture scene, the infamous torture scene that you've probably all seen a million times, goes back home and everything's changed. People are recognizing him and he's being forced because of this torture scene that they use. The one thing he loved the most, Beethoven against him and now he can't stand the Ninth Symphony anymore. It's torture because it reminds him of the therapy sessions. The torture sessions he went through and it forces him not to be a violent person. And the most brilliant thing is in the film who was bullshitted by Alex confronts the government and the scientists and says you cannot force goodness out of a person. You can't. It has to come naturally. It has to come from within. And the scientist government guy says, I don't give a shit. We're stopping crime. Whether it's humane or inhumane. And you can argue that Alex deserves these punishments for how evil he was. Regardless of his age. I really don't want to spoil this movie. I don't. I, I think I've given too much away as it is. This is just one of those movies where you have to see it for yourself. It's so chilling. And Malcolm McDowell gave an Oscar-worthy performance in this. Kubrick's directing was flawless throughout. The screenplay was brilliant. The cast was brilliant. Every last little detail of this film is amazing. And it is both one of the most disturbing and brilliant movies I have ever seen in my life. What's my rating for this masterpiece of a movie? 10 out of 10. Rent it on Netflix, buy the Blu-ray, buy the DVD. It is disturbing, but it is an amazing work of art.